Nick Dacos has undoubtedly had one of the best starts to an AFL career in history. His skills, his work ethic and his ability to read the game are off the charts. The idea that he'll take yet another step in 2024 seems inevitable. But the scary part is, he doesn't even have to. If you exclude his round 21 match against Hawthorne when he got injured, he actually averaged 120 last year. If he can do that again in 2024, he'll be the best defender by far and he could even increase in price, making it impossible to trade him in. You simply must start Dacos. At least, that's what I thought. Until I remembered what else happened in round 21. What happened was Finn McGuinness was absolutely all over Nick Dacos. You could even say he had him on a leash. Despite having a decent 60% time on ground, Dacos only managed 5 disposals and scored just 41 supercoach points. And I can imagine almost half of those points came from a goal which he got thanks to a free kick which was when the ball wasn't even in play. So not only does this invalidate the narrative that he really went 120 last year, it also brings up the very real concern about taggers. And this instantly brings up two questions. The first question is, how well does Nick Dacos deal with tags? So in the past, he hasn't done too well. He's been tagged six times in his career, and in those games he's averaged 82 and has only gone over 100 on one occasion. The second question is, does he have any tags early in 2024? This is obviously because if he does, we can trade him in after his buy and avoid the poor tag effect that scores um, that he did earlier, and we can also pick him up for cheaper. And uh, yeah, he has a couple of games where he's going to get tagged early in the year. So in round one, he plays Sydney, who have Ryan Clark, who's the only player who's tagged Nick Dacos in two reg regular season games. So in those games, he kept him to 62 and 81, respectively. And also in round four, uh, Dacos plays Hawthorne, which, uh, yeah, I think uh, I don't need to explain that. There's also, um, after his buy, he has um, a couple of games where he could get tagged, so... Uh, Port Adelaide in round 6, and Carlton in round 8, so both of those teams tagged him last year. And uh, yeah, I could even see uh, Dacos copping a couple extra tags this year. So St Kilda in round 2, um, we know they have Marcus Windhager, possible tag there. Um, and also Essendon in round 7, uh, we know they were heavily considering tagging him last year um, in the Anzac Day game. And uh, yeah, Dacos ended up being best on ground uh, without getting tagged. So yeah, they could definitely tag him next year. So in summary, I'm a bit worried about Dacos getting tagged, especially in those Sydney and Hawthorne games that he has before his bye. I can easily see him uh, dropping two scores of 80 or less in that time. I'm not saying that he will, but um, he, like even though he is a very talented player, I just think it's not worth a risk, just because he's over 650k and he does um, have that early buy. Uh, I'll definitely be watching him closely through the early games though, and I'll be looking to trade him in um, sometime shortly after his round 5 buy. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, so put your opinion on Nick Dacos down in the comments. Uh, feel free to suggest um, any other player profiles I should do. Um, also remember to like, subscribe, and uh, watch my video on Dustin Martin. Uh, it's not exactly uh, one of my uh, regular videos, uh, but I worked really hard on it, had a lot of fun making it, so uh, yeah.